everyone, I'm Ed with Chicago Flyhouse. Today we're going to take a look at lighting safety cables. These cables are used as a method to provide a secondary safety to lighting fixtures hanging above a stage or other venue. The idea is that if the clamp holding the lights were to fail, the safety cable would catch the fixture and keep it from falling. Two things are important when we're talking about safety cables. First, we have to consider the way in which we'll be attaching the safety cable, and then we have to determine how strong the cable is when it's used in that way. Let's start by considering how a safety cable is installed on a light. We can assume that the light is hanging on a piece of pipe or truss, but depending on the light, the safety may be installed in two different ways. For many years, the standard for installing a safety cable was to wrap the cable around the pipe and the yoke of the instrument and connect the cable back to itself, making a closed loop called a basket, like this. If the light were to fall, it gets caught. In recent years, lighting manufacturers have begun to add a connection point to the body of the light in an effort to decrease the likelihood that any part of the light will fall if the clamp fails. To install a safety in this situation, the cable is typically choked around the pipe by passing the connector through the loop on the other end of the safety, and it creates a small loop like this, then the connector is clipped directly to the body of the light. What this means for us is that the way we use the cable will have some implications on how much load it can be rated for. That brings us to the strength of the safeties. The cables we are using today were made here in our shop, they're made of eighth inch wire rope and are terminated with copper sleeves that were crimped with a manual swaging tool. The connection is a 5 16 snap hook. The rated breaking strength of the wire rope is 2,000 pounds, but we can only find a working load limit for the snap hooks. They're rated for use up to 300 pounds. If we assume the manufacturer used a 5 to 1 design factor, we would expect them to break at about 1,500 pounds. To test the actual strength of the safeties, we put them in our break matic We'll be testing both the basket and straight line pull configurations. The straight line pull test failed at an average of about 1,320 pounds. This is lower than we expected based on our estimate of the breaking strength of the snap hook. That tells us that maybe the manufacturer used a 4 to 1 design factor instead of a 5 to 1 factor when they made the snap hooks. We want to use a 5 to 1 design factor. So we'll consider the working load limit for these safeties to be about 265 pounds or one fifth of the braking strength. The basket pull tests should have failed about twice the load of the straight line pull, but they turned out to be a little stronger than expected. The baskets failed at an average of 2,930 pounds. If we apply our five to one design factor, the working load limit for these would be about 585 pounds. For all the safeties we tested, failure occurred at the snap hook as our ratings predicted. You can see here, the hooks are stretched out and if we tried to use them, they're no good anymore. Now that we know how strong the cables are in each configuration, we can draw some conclusions, but before we do, we have to talk about one more piece of the puzzle, shock loads. When a light falls and is stopped by the safety cable, the cable experiences a shock load. No load on the cable and then a big load all of a sudden. Shock loads could be many times the weight of the object and are affected by three factors, the weight of the object, how far it fell, and how quickly it stops. Since safety cables don't stretch much, the stopping distance when a light falls is short and fairly consistent regardless of how the safety is attached. Falling distance, on the other hand, can change significantly depending on how the safety is installed, since making a basket causes the potential falling distance to be cut in half. But it doesn't attach to the body of the light, so if the light breaks off the yoke, parts of it might still fall. Using a choke method is not as strong and may let the light fall farther, but theoretically it will keep all the parts of the instrument from falling down. The weight of the light is the last thing to consider. Conventional ellipsoidal lights weigh only about 10 pounds, whereas moving lights typically weigh between 40 and 90 pounds. That's going to have a big impact on how much weight hits the safety cable. When we take all of this into account, it becomes difficult to say that one method is definitively better than the other, because each one might be ideal for a given situation. The other thing to remember is that there are variations on these two scenarios. For instance, it might be possible to make a basket and then clip the snap hook directly to the body of the light using this kind of configuration. When we do this, the pull on the snap hook is still a straight line pull, and so we have to consider that with our load rating, but we've reduced the falling distance, so how much load will hit the safety if the light falls is a little bit less. The important thing is to understand how the configuration of the cable affects the strength, and to know what your cables are rated for. Many of the vendors that sell safety cables do not provide a rating for them, and it's up to you to track that information down. Thanks for watching, and if there's anything you'd like to see us talk about in the future, please leave a note in the comments section below.